everyone. So today I am going to do a couple of quick repots here. This is going to be uh, not going to take too long, but I'm super excited about these pine trees that I started uh, this past spring. And I wanted to just sort of go through the quick process that I'm using on these to improve the roots. And, you know, these guys are only nine months old at this point. It's uh, January 2021 right now. And they were started, I believe, in March of 2020. Um, that they're in right now is uh, about 80% perlite. It has, uh, these guys have a little bit of bark at the bottom just to keep the perlite from, from falling out of the holes that are uh, in the bottom of the container. Now, when I pull this out, I've already done a few flats of these and um, you can kind of see, you can kind of see that like, there are some really nice roots here. These are really pretty uh, roots and they're obviously actively growing right now. You can see the the bark right here, most of the perlite and, and uh, coir. So like 80% perlite, 20% uh, cocoa coir uh, on, the, on the top portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom third of the root ball, basically just as if I, using the scissors like a Walter Paul Sawzall technique. <laughs> and if you guys don't know what that is, I just Google Walter Paul and Sawzall. Paul is P-A-L-L, -L. Sawzall is S-A-W-Z-A-L-L, uh, or reciprocating saw, I guess. Anyway, okay, so the so I cut off the bottom third, and then I want to kind of rake out uh, the crossing roots that I have um, so that I can see what the structure of the roots is. And in this case, uh, it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to cut it into kind of like a circle here. I want all these root tips to be relatively short because I'm trying to, just like I have here, these have already been trimmed back once. Um, they were The seeds were started in a flat and then transferred into these three inch containers uh, to grow out. And when I did that, I actually didn't think that I was gonna be, uh, that I was gonna be repotting them this winter, but I decided to take some of these, some of these just to kind of demonstrate how good the, the roots can be. These, um, so if you're a bonsai black pine nut, um, you probably know all about the seedling cutting technique. And um, these were not seedling cuttings, um, but you can see I have a nice radial spread of roots that's coming out in all directions. They're not all the same size, but that's okay. Uh, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim the bigger ones shorter and we're gonna leave the little ones a little bit longer. Um, I'm also looking to have the roots pretty consistently slope downward. I don't want the roots to come down and go at a 90 degree out, 90 degrees out from the trunk. Um, that later causes basically like a pancake as the tree gets older. And um, it, you might want that on a maple tree, on a Japanese maple or, or a trident, but uh, on a black pine, it, it doesn't look that great. I grew a few of them and <laughs> well, I gotta say, it. it it looks kind of cool, but it's definitely not the convention in terms of black pine rooting. So uh, I think it's, it's more desirable to have the roots kind of gently splay out and kind of enter the soil at a 30 degree angle or maybe even 45. Um, so the second one kind of fell apart on the bottom there, which means that it probably has a little bit uh, less root mass in this pot. I'm gonna just go through the same procedure Kind of raking things, cutting the larger roots a little bit shorter than the smaller roots, and making kind of a cone shape um, root structure, which you can see is sort of what I have going on there. Now, the, the section right here where these roots are not all coming out at the same angle, I'm not too concerned about yet. Um, I'm going to Cut back the stuff that's underneath here a little bit more. But, you know, if there was a, 
if there was a long tap root coming out of here, which didn't happen because of the flats that they were in, um, then I would definitely want to cut that off. But all these roots are going down and then pretty much splaying out at the angle that I want. All right, so I've got those out. I've got both roots cut. Let me get this soil out of the way. And uh, I don't like using perlite and cocoa or peat in the bottom of pots that I'm putting black pines into, but I don't mind using it um, as the as the top dressing. And because these trees are nice and healthy, no root aphids, no signs of root disease, I'm just going to go ahead and use this, reuse this soil as the the top third. Um, but I'm going to pot them up into these into these pond baskets that are. Uh, like kind of six inches tall, six inch diameter. Uh, I have one here with uh, pumice and bark in it that I'll use for the for demonstration purposes. Grab a piece of this is a 2.5 millimeter shiny aluminum, and I've switched for for this kind of stuff where I'm where I'm growing. Where I'm going trees that are, you know, not in bonsai pots, not going into a bonsai show, not something that is like an aesthetic part of a garden, but rather a, a process. It's going through a process. And the, the important thing is that it continued through that process. I've switched to this shiny aluminum because it scares off birds. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's, that would be if these were grape, grape vines. No, they, uh, it just, it makes it more visible. So if I'm combating um, wire cutting in, if I'm walking around uh, looking at trees and I want to be able to spot which are wired and which are not wired, then it's easier for me to spot that if, uh, if the wire is not camouflaged like it is when you have a, a black anodized. So... I find it's, uh, it's pretty nice and, and useful. All right, so what I've done here, you can kind of see I've made a kind of spiral right around the base. And what that is doing is it's pushing all those roots down at a bit of an angle. Um, I want them all kind of going down at a 45 degree angle to create the base that I like. And um, this one's sticking up a little bit here, so maybe you can tweak. You can use the the, this sort of loop and a half of wire to kind of spread all those roots out. Um, now the roots are still gonna go out from this, uh, but I just want the major roots heading down. These will all fuse as the tree gets older. And then uh, I've wrapped the wire around at a 45, going between the needles as much as possible. If you smash a few of them, it's not a big deal. But um, I, this is kind of off the topic of repotting, but. When I work with this kind of stuff, I always do these two operations together because it allows you to see the entire tree. You're looking at the root structure, you're looking at the entire trunk structure, and you get a sense of uh, a sense of everything all at once. So since I've got the roots positioned, I want to put some movement in this. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can put whatever movement you want in. Um, I tend to try to start with a relatively uh, tight bend as close to the roots as possible. Sometimes you can actually put the bend into this mass of roots, um, which would be more the case with an exposed root, but you can use these roots uh, to that purpose. Now, a little bit, a little way up the stem, these are side buds that you can see on here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like seven or eight of them on here. None of them are so big that I'm concerned about a whorl or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to leave them all here and I put the wire between them. I'm also going to try not to smash them as I'm making these bends with the larger trunk. But the reason I'm talking about it is that those little buds are potentially more useful to me for making small trees uh, than this big bud is. So the big bud, obviously it, I need it. Um, that bud is what's going to make a big trunk extension and it's going to create more thickness, more, more uh, wood, but these ultimately may be some of my finished branches if I'm, if I'm going to make a shoheen sized tree out of this. And I've gone ahead and bent, um, bent the trunk in such a, a way that with relatively tight bends, kind of irregular bends, uh, this 
this bud that's hanging sort of directly downward maybe ultimately won't be useful, but I'm not going to cut it off for right now. Uh, I'm just going to just going to leave this to grow and see what it looks like uh, in a year or maybe a little bit less than a year. Um, so when they're short like this, I don't even tie them into these pond baskets. Uh, if I was concerned about the tree tipping over, I might add some little number one aluminum to a loop of wire up here so that this can't move like this. But you can see I've got the soil an inch and a half or two inches below the rim here, and I've set the, the tree in there. I'm gonna take this mixture of, of soil that came out of the pot that it was in before, and I just pulled the, the larger bark bits out, leaving the smaller ones, and put a little mound in it, nestle the, the roots in there. Um, when you're doing this kind of bending, one of the things that happens is you get these needles sticking down into the soil. I tend to try to hold those needles up while I'm adding soil. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult. You can also try to use wire to accomplish that. Uh, but I'm trying to keep the needles from getting buried in the, in the soil. So just added some of that perlite cocoa mix back in here and use a chopstick to kind of, we're not really chopping it in like you would with an established bonsai, but I want to make sure that it's firm around the roots and maybe get some tiny particles in between uh, those roots since I basically did bare root it. And then I'm kind of tapping it down and then I'm going to gently let go of those needles. So this is still kind of wobbly, but as a seedling, I'm not as concerned as I would be if it were, you know, a big established old bonsai tree. Uh, you can definitely anchor it, but it's generally relatively safe to just add a little bit more soil which and bury a little bit more of the trunk. You don't actually want to see the surface roots at this point. You want all those roots well down into the soil so they can all side branch. And you don't want the soil that's around the roots to be disturbed by watering or wind or you know anything like that. You want those roots to be firmly feeling like they are in uh, a place where they can branch and, and grow so that your, your surface roots because if they don't branch there, they'll branch further down. And then you have large, a bunch of large roots, like say five large roots, instead of a root, a large root that comes out and splits and then splits and splits and splits, which is really uh, a little bit prettier than those large roots that fuse together. All right, so that's potting it up into a basket. Um, this soil is already moist, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother trying to water it. I tapped it there um, just to kind of compact the soil a little bit more so that it stabilizes it a little bit as well. But like I said, I didn't, I didn't actually go ahead and tie that into the container. And you know, if you're, if you're just doing a couple of them and you want to tie them into the container, by all means go for it. Um, <laughs> but by the, if you're doing a couple hundred, you'll then find out why I tend to tend to skip that step. All right. So here's the second one and I'm not going to put this one in a, uh, in a bonsai pot or growing pot for you. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same operation to the roots, kind of putting like a one and a half twist. And you can see that these coils are wider. I'm not actually clamping down the roots. I'm sort of going around the roots and then using that, <clears throat> excuse me, using that coil to just kind of gently nudge them downwards. Uh, it's not a dramatic change that I'm doing there. It's, it's subtle. And I like to have uh, that sort of shape at the base of my trees. So the last one I made into um, a little shoheen. This one has a similar budding pattern. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six buds of varying size here in this sort of inch and a half long part of the stem. And then there's not really any established side buds up here. We just have the, the large bud at the top. By bending this over, I'm going to make these stronger. Um, but when I'm bending trees, I always try to make, make trees different. I don't want to just make every tree have exactly the same, you know, trunk line or whatever. So I'm going to make this one a little bit taller like that. That means that 
maybe it's going to be a you know maybe it's going to be a bunjin maybe ultimately i'm going to cut it back here uh, it's kind of hard to say but adding some twist and some interesting movement but not necessarily adding the the compact movement that would make it into a into something that you would m almost have to use for shohin um, although that last little tweak that i did made it almost into a corkscrew when you're when you're making bends <clears throat> the sort of creating a line that's unpredictable is what i'm usually after and occasionally i create an unpredictable line that's what i just did and then tweak it and end up looking like oh that just looks like a pigtail it's like basically a spiral well, with a little bit of uh, intricate movement in it but so i'm going to go do something else here so that it doesn't look like a so that it doesn't look like a pigtail all right and i'll just go ahead and plant this the same way as I did the other one into a basket. Um, I have previously planted trees at this stage into bonsai containers. And if you're looking to make, you know, small bunjin size pines, it's not a bad time to do it. You've got an established, you know, beginning of a root ball here that's relatively small. And if you put it in a small container, it's going to grow slower um, <clears throat> so that over the course of 15 years, instead of having a big trunk from growing it in a in a big pond basket or something like that, you might have a trunk that's only like the size of my pinky or thumb or something, depending on exactly how you treat it. So black pine root work. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.